Today, we are going to do a Lisa guide. She's one of the free characters you receive in the game from the story, and she's one of the more... Well, I wouldn't say underrated, I'd say she lands on the spot she is, yeah? Since I'm probably the one with the uh, most decked out Lisa in this game, if I do say so, yeah? I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty proud to flex my Lisa. This is my uh, talents, my constellation. My set, the weapon, and the stats. Now, within the video guide itself, I will be using Lisa as demonstration from here. And from the base domain where you can test out reactions and such. So you can see um, everything without the constellation because these challenges give me a C0 Lisa. So well, in the video itself, I will go through... Um, Lisa guide and showcase, going through all her hidden mechanics and such, and no, we're not gonna do hidden climbing mechanics, but hidden mechanics and such that affects majority of her gameplay, yeah? Let's start with Lisa's talents. Her normal attack, Lightning Touch, is a 4-hit normal attack chain that locks on enemy and does okay damage. Her charge attack is the highest catalyst user charge attack in the game, not counting extra passive damage bonus and such, in peer ratio, until Yen Fei comes out, I think. Her, the last hit of her auto attack chain does have a teleport and iframe. You can technically use her fourth attack to iframe and dodge enemy attacks. But mostly, if I really stay on Lisa that long, I just use the last hit as a teleport, right? Just to reposition. I would never use this ability to actually dodge attacks. And her charge attack is a cone charge attack that with the level 20 passive also applies a stack of Violet's Arc, which helps her E ability. And let's go to the E, yes. Lisa's second ability, Violet's Arc, has a press and a hold version. The press version, she sends out a little ball of lightning with a 1 second cooldown. Her hold E portion has a 16 second cooldown and does a ton more damage. And this damage is uh, increased per stack she gets. With her charge attack, she can apply one stack. With her tap E, she can apply one stack. That's what people think. <laughs> I'll show you in a bit. So, mainly for Lisa, Lisa E does have a very high damage ratio, and she truly seems like a mage character as she needs to stand still to charge up a hard hitting ability and then release it. And her tap E was supposed to enable her to do that big damage. Right, so. Get them all bunch up together. Yeah, they kind of move like this, which is kind of odd. Alright, I'll just walk over here and get them all to walk over to me, I suppose. And I'm dead. <laughs> so, everyone knows that her tap E gains, uh, puts one stack on an enemy. And this one stack increases the damage of your hold E ability, yes? But there's a mechanic in the game called bouncing, where if all enemies are really close to each other and you uh, tap Lisa's E, they actually get two stacks or even three stacks all at one time. Let me uh, wait for the stacks to expire and I'll do on all of them again. There. Now some of them gets three, some of them gets two, some of them gets one. And that's because Lisa's tap E does have a small radius, the explosion. And if that explode hits another enemy, they all get extra stacks. So if you have a way to group enemy together, that's easy. That's an easy way to get extra stacks, right? So Lisa can easily free stack or max stacks on an enemy just by tapping her E alone. But there are a couple more things that you can do to gain extra stack on Lisa. And namely, it is uh, doing super conduct and doing overload. If you do super conduct or overload, you gain two stacks instead of one. So this is for the super conduct one. I think this this is this is a combo that everyone knows, yeah? Super conduct. Uh, ice and then Electro with tap E Lisa and you gain three stacks, yeah? Like so. But they gain three? The reason why they gain three stack is that that explosion does enable the bouncing mechanic we said earlier to bounce even further. So I can do it again. And if they're all close to each other, they all get three stacks. Same thing here, if you were to apply Pyro and then Electro with Lisa, you give everyone stacks up to 3, yeah? 
and that is how you gain stacks with Lisa, with tap E and how to gain more stacks with it. Using Swole with Anemo or using Electro Charge doesn't have the same function. I don't know why. So for Lisa, hold E ability, it just does. Good damage, you can charge it, and I will now showcase the hold E, yes? I think everyone knows the fact that, yes, Lisa hold E does do a okay. ton of damage. Because it has a whopping 1350 damage ratio when max. It's someone's burst ability when max. But that's not the important thing, right? What, I, what I'm about to show you is one mechanic that Lisa has that is absolutely unnecessary, but it's in the game. <laughs> Lisa's hold A ability has an infinite vertical reach. That means no matter how high up the enemy is, so for example the guy up there, he will take damage from it and he will die. And next is her ult. For this ability, the part where it knocks back, it actually knocks back enemy, but for smaller enemies, it kind of stuns them for a brief moment or so, so smaller enemies like Hillichols or Treasure Hoarders will not be able to act but bigger or higher weight class enemy will still be able and be unaffected by this knockback whatsoever. Okay, at level 13, Violet Arcs has a 1035% damage ratio at 3 stack and her press damage is 170. And for her Lightning Rose, her Elemental Burst, at level 13, it does 777% 7, 7, 7 damage per discharge. It has a duration of 15 seconds with a 20 second cooldown and 80 energy cost. Her Lightning Rose ability hits 29 times overall uh, at level 13, averaging up to around a 2 to 53% damage ratio. At level 6, this ability has a 51.18% damage per discharge and hits 29 times, so that is 1484 damage. Well, percent, right? And at level 70, she gains this passive. Opponents hit by Lightning Rose has the defense decreased by 15% for 10 seconds. Since her ult lasts 15 seconds and this passive lasts 10 seconds, you can maintain this debuff for up to 25 seconds. So that's across her entire cooldown, so you can maintain this debuff on the enemy at all times, assuming you have, you know, good enough energy recharge. And this is probably her best passive. I'll be honest, this is mainly the reason why you use her. Except... You know what I mean. But yeah, there's only three sources of... Re defense reduction in the game, which is Razor C4, Lee C2, and Lisa is the only one that gets it for free. And why this is important? Uh, I'll, I'll have to lay down some concepts for you, okay? Okay, we're gonna test it on the Geo Vishap. The Geo Vishap has a natural 30% physical damage resistance. So normally, my Zongli first hit will do 1, 3, 5, 2 damage, yeah? If I hold my E, Zhongli hold E barrier has a minus 20% physical resistance. So enemy now, the enemy now should have a 10%, right? From 30 minus 20, that'll be 10%. So now I'm hitting for 1, 7, 3, 8. I'm gonna try on Superconduct now. If I go for Ice, for Electro, that'll be Superconduct. With Superconduct now, I'm hitting for 2, 2, 2, 1 damage. The enemy resistance right now is minus 15. Because 20% from Zhongli and 40% from Superconduct is 60%. But resistance below 0% has half the effect. So that's why instead of minus 30, the enemy only has minus 15. So now I'm gonna try Zhongli hold E with Superconduct and with Rosaria. And in total, that would be 20. Plus 20 and a plus 40 from superconduct, so that's 80% damn uh, resistance reduction, right? Enemy has 30 base. Any resistance reduction below zero has had the effect. So now we're gonna hit them with minus 25 resistance reduction. So with minus 25 resistance reduction, we're hitting for. Two, four, one, four. Let me get my ult back. So that's three instance of resistance reduction for two, four, one, four. Now I'll show you just one instance 
of resistance reduction and then an instance of defense reduction. So the enemy right now is just minus 15 resistance and minus 15 defense, right? So as you can see right now, like two two instances of resistance reduction and one instance of defense reduction has the same result. Because the reason why it has roughly the same result as well we discussed at the start, right? When the enemy resistance is below zero, you get half the effect. So generally only the very first instance of resistance reduction gives you the best result. And that's why very distant set minus 40% resistance reduction on top of venti c6 it's probably the most useless thing in the game because essentially you're paying a thousand four hundred dollar for like two percent more damage i think that's why venti c6 is a scam unless you want a nemo resistance reduction now we're gonna try everything minus 30 defense minus 80 resistance reduction all right so i'm gonna do Rosaria, into Lisa, into Razor, and that would be 2840 damage. So we went from 1352 to 2840, which is doubling damage. Well, more than double the damage, right? So, the problem is, everything in Genshin Impact has diminishing return. Every single aspect of Genshin Impact stat line has diminishing return. I guess maybe except crit rate, but then again, if your crit hits 100%, you get 120 crit rate, that's diminishing return, right? Because you're getting nothing back from it. Oh, well, stacking multiple instances of resistance reduction doesn't really help you too much, but stacking multiple instances of defense reduction, well, defense reduction alone doesn't matter too much. It has to be on top of resistance reduction, hence why I think Razor is really popular. Because he can proc Superconduct, and he also has Defense Reduction on his Constellation. Which I think that's why it makes him popular, it makes him a decently good DPS. Next is to go for Constellation, yeah? Lisa's Constellation 1, Infinite Circuit. Whenever Lisa hits an enemy when holding E, she gets 2 energy per enemy hit, up to 10 max every cast, right? That's what it says, but that's a lie. Because tapping E also generates energy from that passive alone. Even though her tap E ability should not generate energy. Let me go up. Lisa's tap E ability generates zero energy and her hold E generates five. But because of this C1 passive that is mistranslated as hell, he does gain energy from tapping her E. You can see the animation right here. The particle going in. With that passive, second constellation, electromagnetic field. You know, if you use, if you're playing Lisa without a barrier character, you must be the most massive boss player in the game, or you have a tank Lisa or something. I don't see the point increasing her interrupt resistance if a barrier gives her interrupt immunity. C3 increase the level of her burst by 3. C4 increase the number of bolts from her ult by 1 to 3. I have this massive, like, why does it have to be RNG? As we talked about earlier, Lisa ult hits 29 times throughout its duration only on one target, right? Basically, this constellation does increase Lisa AoE cleave by around 4 times, right? If you're lucky. It's going up from a... what's what's the number again? 777, right? Times 29 times 4. So technically, this ability has a 9000 damage ratio if you're hitting multiple enemies, if you're lucky. C5. Increase the level of her E ability by 3. Very nice. C6. Pulsating Witch. I think this is the constellation that people always look at, right? Three stacks. Three stacks. With a decent AoE radius as well. But since we already talked about how you get three stack with Lisa's E ability, with the mechanics we talked about earlier about bouncing the superconduct and the overload trick, her C6 is kind of meh. <laughs> <laughs> it makes her easy to play, but it's so... it's so unnecessary. 
or C6 is more of a convenient rather than something mandatory. But that convenient is really good because sometimes it's annoying to try and remember everything, yeah? Next is Artifacts. There are several builds for Lisa, but I think, generally, all the builds revolve around this. The... Okay, this might be Copium, but in patch 1.6, they did say they were gonna buff all reaction instead of melt and vaporize. So like, electro charge, overload, throw, so and so, right? So this set, this 4P set, should be the best set for Lisa after the update. If reaction does more damage, yes? But for me right now... I am running 2 Thunder Fury, 2 Noblesse, just for the raw damage. You can also run 2 Thunder Fury, 2 Gladiator, if you're a lucky ass to get a Gladiator set that is good. That'll be her two sets. Her sets are pretty straightforward. You can run Thunder Suitor. I'd sit say that, yeah, how about, how about we just stick with Thunder Fury, you know? We'll stick with the simple one. Let's just stick with the, with the simple and normal one. And no physical damage, Lisa, with Skyward doesn't work. Don't try it. Alright, so let me just talk more about the weapons, right? For 5-star weapon choice, as I said, Skyward Atlas should be the best weapon for her because it gives you raw base stat, attack percentage, at refinement 1, it's still 12% elemental damage, which is really good. For her Lost Sprayer, um... Don't. Just... If you really need the critical rate... Sure. But I'll be honest, if you've played Lisa, and you stay on field with Lisa for 16 seconds, you must really love Lisa. Because you need like 12 seconds to outdamage Atlas, I assume? Or you have more crit rate, right? So you might have better DPS, yeah? Memory of Dust. Memory of Dust does hit harder than Skyward Atlas if you full stack it. But same applies. Did you really stay on Lisa for that long to finish a whole auto attack chain or two? The full stack, and then hold E with Lisa. I think the rotation of Lisa hitting old and holding E is long enough. The 4 star, what's it? Amazing, just swap to Lisa, hold E, snap, that's done, right? Wine and song? Nah. I have perception, it's a good, that stick, that's fine. It has decent damage, I'd say, but the passive is like, yeah, it's okay, it's just a weaker version of Atlas, but what's it is a better version of our perception, so just use what's it. Solar Pearl, if you can afford the battle pass, this is good. It gives you at refinement 5, like a 40% damage modifier, which is amazing. Sacrificial like Fragment, I mean like, you know, if you want to hold her E twice, most you kind of use Lisa to just drop the ult for the defense reduction, and then hold E as some extra damage, rather than you don't really main damage it. Pavonius, go to ER. If you need ER, I would always recommend Pavonius weapon, all of them are okay. broken. But, now th this is the important part, right? This is where, this is the true weapon for most people on Lisa. So, <laughs> Lisa would probably be the f most free-to-play, low-invested character that you have for free. Because you can use Trilling Tails, level her up to unlock this passive, and that is her job. Maybe slap some energy recharge onto her, and that's fine. That is literally gonna be her job for low spender, and if you're like AR30 or something, that's how you play Lisa. Right, that, that's just her abilities, right? And her weapons, yeah? Alright, so, Team Comp, Team Comp, Team Comp. This is a pretty popular comp, why is it named Rosa Lisa? This, uh, this comp allows you to, uh, frog, um, multiple reaction at the same time, and no, it does not interrupt your vaporized reaction too much, you just do another electro reaction on top based on how the elemental aura works, because Zingchu and Bennett provide a lot of aura on their own. Uh, the Yula team also works, but for this team, I'd say I would prefer Fischl more, just because you want most on-time screen on Yula, because he shows up really inconsistent without the energy recharge from the three characters, yeah? Next team is uh, any team, I think everyone knows, but like, any team with Lisa, Venti, probably worse, just to suck in. I wouldn't say Lisa would be 
a mandatory on any team comp per se. I'd say Lisa is more of like, okay, I have a flex slot. How do I increase my damage? I already have some resistance reduction. I want a defense down. You can just use Blade to defense down sometimes, but overload kind of is annoying for her, right? And she also eats up more reaction. You can just put, okay, if I need a defense down on top of resistance reduction, you put Lisa in, yeah? But most of the time, the problem is, the biggest, biggest problem is, it's not that Lisa is super weak, it's that her competition are super strong. She's competing with these two. And as, as I said earlier, if Beidou's a 9, Fischl's an 8, and Lisa's like a 7.5 or a 7. That's the problem. She's not bad, people overlook her. I think the two reason is that her competition is so fierce. And the second reason, reason is like, even though Lisa is free, it is easier to get Fischl's and Beidou consolation than Lisa consolation. Because at least those character goes on raid up, where the baseline character never goes on raid up. Now, time for some team showcase. Yes, this is gonna be so out of touch and unrelatable. So now, one with three stacks and one with zero stacks. The one with three stacks will take 91,000 damage, and the other one, how much damage did he take? I didn't see, fuck. Actually, All right, thanks for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below. You can find the link to my Twitch in the description. I hope to see some of you YouTube frogs on my next stream. All right, goodbye. Smash that like button and subscribe. Okay, he's gonna cut that. Never mind. Delete this. Delete this part. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah.